Managing who your co-pilot agent should be talking to is arguably the most important question that you should be asking because probably 90% of the use cases for co-pilot agents generally require authentication. And let's go ahead and show you exactly how to set up manual authentication within Microsoft Copilot Studio quickly and safely right now. Here I am within Microsoft Copilot Studio. And first things first, there are a couple of settings that you're gonna need to update if you wanna set up manual authentication. So go ahead and up here in the top right, click on settings and then click on security. And then here you will see authentication. And there's kind of three tiers, so to speak, to authentication. First one being no authentication, which as it says here, it's publicly available and anybody that has anybody can then access your agent without proving who they are or without your agent knowing who they are and obviously access the information that your agent accesses. So there are a couple of cases where this is the case. Generally, I feel like in most scenarios, you're gonna to wanna to use Authenticate with Microsoft. This is if this agent is going to be talking exclusively to people within your organization. So people that you know already have Entra ID authentication, this is gonna be what you need, but there are absolutely scenarios where you wanna set up some custom authentication. That is where you're gonna to need to use this authenticate manually. Here's this kind of flip to require users to sign in. And I will say this process is a little nuanced. We actually have to hop over to um, Azure and get some stuff set up for this to work. But one quick note, go ahead and copy this redirect URL, it's very important. As well as, let's go ahead and flip this. We're gonna use a client secret in order to achieve what we are wanting to achieve today. So go ahead and flip this to with client secrets. Once you have done that and you have copied your redirect URL, go ahead and go to Microsoft Azure portal, portal.azure.com. I'll have a link to any referrals or things that I'm referring to in this video down in the description down below. And you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and find app registrations. Now, when you come to app registrations, you can go ahead, you can search as well up here in the top to find it if you don't see it directly on your screen. When you load into the homepage, you're gonna to wanna to click new registration. When you do this, you're gonna to to need to fill in a display name. Let's just go ahead and call ours. We'll just call it agent authentication. And now something that's really important is this here, this supported account types is basically the type of accounts that can authenticate through this app registration or basically the type of accounts that you want to be authenticated in your co-pilot agent. So this could just be just people in your organization, or you may have a scenario where you need one of these. Just for our example today, we'll go ahead and use this one as it's kind of the, the most all encompassing one here. Then what we're gonna go ahead and do, go ahead and select, select, select a platform here and type in, or wow, and click web. And then right here, this is where you're gonna wanna put in that registration path, or excuse me, this uh, the redirect URL, that's what I meant to say, here. So again, I'll just copy it again for good measure. You're gonna wanna paste that into here. Yours will likely look similar to mine, um, dependent on your region. Something I didn't realize, at least at first, when I was first going through this, is this region, this URL is dependent on your region. There's also a link down in the description down below to the Microsoft documentation that talks about the currently supported regions. So if your agent is in multiple regions or is in a different region than mine, then you'll need to wanna to make sure you use that URL as opposed to maybe this one that I'm using. I'm guessing though, if your agent was created in a certain region, then your URL would you know, be the correct one. But again, I don't necessarily know. Go ahead and select register. Perfect, now that we have created our app registration, you're gonna wanna go here and see this application or client ID. Go ahead and copy this here. And if I go ahead and come up to here, this is what you're going to put in here. So let me go ahead and paste that. Since we have it, let me go ahead and do that. Sorry for the swapping back and forth between tabs. But now that I've got my client ID, there are a couple other things that we need to set up for our agent authentication. I just realized I spelled this wrong. That's okay. Our agent authentication <laughs> app registration. So once you have that, you're gonna wanna go ahead and click on authentication here. This is also where you can add some of those extra URLs or if you registered without creating that URL, redirect URL, 
you can add them here. But one thing that you're going to want to make sure you check are these two things down here, this implicit implicit grant and hybrid flows to really just simplify what these things do. You need access tokens to be able to interact with the services for the signed in user. And you need the ID token so that you can know some information about who the user actually is. So we need both of these things. Let me go ahead and click save. The reason for this too, just to reiterate is when you're using manual authentication, you're essentially telling Copilot Studio, you're saying, hey, Copilot Studio agent, don't handle the authentication. I will go ahead and do it and I'm gonna pass these tokens or the credentials manually or, or doing something else. And so this is just a part of that piece of that puzzle in order to be able to do that. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and set up a client secret. So if you go ahead and click on certificates and secrets here and go ahead and select new client secret, you can call this whatever you'd like. We'll call it our authentication secret. Let me go ahead and select add. Now something that is very, very important here is the value you need. I actually made this mistake at first. The value that you need is not the secret ID. The value that you need is this value here. Go ahead and copy this. I would recommend as well, once you leave this site, you can never see this value again. You can make new secrets, no problem, but you can never see this value again. It may be worth your while to save it somewhere um, if you feel like you're gonna need this value several times. But nonetheless, this is the value that we need. I'm gonna go ahead and flip back to Copilot Studio. And in my client secret, again, the client secret value, I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in there. These other three things are things that we don't need to, to be concerned about. Let me go ahead and select save. Now, while this is saving, there are a couple, again, still a couple of updates that we need to do for our app registration and specifically give it some API permissions. So if I go ahead and go back to my app registration in the Azure portal, and I go ahead and click API permissions here, go ahead and select add permissions. And the first one that should be here is Microsoft Graph. This is the permission that we need. If you click on this, this is super, super important. You wanna make sure you're getting delegated permissions, as in it will use the permissions that have been delegated to the signed in user. You use application permissions, it kind of uh, negates this entire thing. So you're gonna wanna make sure you use delegated permissions. And then the two things that you must have is going to be this open ID, and profile. These essentially are needed for authentication and needed to access the actual user's information like their name and their username and any other information regarding them. So you need these two things. You also may want to consider in your scenario, if you wanted to be able to access users' chats or certain files the user has access to, or maybe SharePoint sites the user has access to, you're gonna wanna add all of those permissions in here. This dropdown list is pretty large and you can find a lot in there and you can search for them as well. But anything that you think you might want to access through this agent, through the signed in user, you're gonna to wanna to have the permissions here. That's why I just wanna say, if you feel like I'm not answering your specific question or wanna get in direct contact with me, there's a lot of links in the description, but the first link in the description is going to be a way that you can book a direct call directly on my calendar, my personal calendar, and get in direct contact with me so we can set up some time to answer any questions that you may have. Getting back in here, now once you have your permissions, you can go ahead and select add permissions. And we are almost done at this point. We can see here that you have permissions. Any of the other ones that you selected will also show here. We now need to click on expose in API and add what's called a scope. At first, I didn't really feel like I understood what this scope was, but you're basically saying, hey, system, I trust agent authentication. <laughs> I trust this app registration to do these things for this person. And so we also need to add a couple of scopes. Go ahead and click add a scope, hit save and continue. You shouldn't have any need to change that as far as I am aware. And then here it says who has consent. I'm going ahead and just saying admin and users. And you're gonna need to, I don't think this stuff which that you fill in here particularly matters too much but let me just go ahead and say agent read for those and we need the state of enabled. Let me go ahead and add the scope. Looks like I need a scope name. 
We'll just call it that. Perfect. And here I now have the scope created. And at this point, I would say that your agent's authentication is now set up. If I go back to Microsoft Copilot Studio, again, my agent has finished saving. If I close the settings here, one thing that you'll notice is, is if you caught it at the beginning, it showed my conversation start message. Now it is showing a login message. So just so you know, when you change the Copilot's settings to manual authentication, it actually enables a certain topic that is otherwise kind of just hidden in the background, this sign in topic. And we can see here that this is kind of where it is getting these messages from. So say you wanted to remove this message or change what it looked like, you can do that here. You can update the text um, and update you know, what shows in this. But now if I come over here and click login, and if I select the user that I'm wanting to log in as, then what's gonna happen is it's gonna direct you to a page that has a validation code. If I go ahead and select copy, go back to my agent, paste that code into here, it's then going to authenticate my person, my user. And this brings me then to my conversation start topic. And now everything I'm talking, I was only able to access this because I authenticated and I provided the right code that it gave me through my app registration. I hope this is making sense. If you have any questions, like I said, be sure to reach out to me or just put them down in the comments down below. Generally try to respond to every single comment, every single question that is down there. If you have any questions regarding how to make your copilot agent say a certain person's name, which I think is kind of the next step now that they're authenticated, you're gonna to wanna to check out this video here. Or if you have questions on how to change the conversation start message, you're gonna to wanna to check out this video here. Thank you so much for sticking in the video. My name is Griffin Lickfeld, the host of the Citizen Developer channel, and I'm excited to connect with you in the next one.